Yeah, I think their strengths are very similar. I think they both enjoy the physical play. Uh, both athletic guys. You know, Colin has battled through injuries in the last couple of years. Just soft tissue stuff, nothing major, but it's prohibited his ability to kind of get stronger. He had a great offseason. He's healthy, he's feeling great. Drew's added some strength and some size. Uh, I think both guys run very well. I think maybe strength from a Colin standpoint might be a little bit more experience, right? A little bit more. And I think uh, one of Drew's strengths is he's pretty fearless. You know, so I think both guys bring a great uh, great package. I also like what Joseph Jones is doing, he's a young guy, learning and growing. So I think we got pretty good depth over there. Did, did you come as a linebacker? Yeah, well, we anticipated him playing linebacker from day one, but he was a high school DB. Which is like exotic science. If you yeah, you know, they eat a little bit here in Chicago. So, so, did you be open to rotating Colin and Drew if they both had great camps? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. So, I, I rotate a lot of guys. Yeah, I mean, especially on defense. You know, it's a little, you know, I would prefer to have five offensive linemen here. Okay? But even like last year, a great example. Go into the opener and we've got uh, Chuck Porcelli starting, and then Neil Dieters ends up taking over the role. Chuck's got to go in some in later games and some different roles, so on and so forth. So, you know, the, the more that we talk about kind of how we want to get things together is how much depth can we have? How many guys can we play? And if, it, if it's a definite separation, then you'll probably see one guy play more than the other. But if they're close, we'll rotate them, keep them fresh, and, and away we go. Now, again, I, I prefer the O-line to be five guys consistent, but we'll, we'll see how that plays out. How does Jay Hooden do it for you guys? Talk to him about um, <clears throat> trying to get things very individual yeah. for the players. Yeah. About that a little bit. Yeah, you know, we're, we're really working hard, number one, to help keep our guys healthy and safe from what we're doing from a football performance standpoint. So, a lot of preventative stuff, obviously strength, explosion, explosive movement building, top end speed building, but functional movement, functional strength per position. So, you know, for example, our quarterback's workout is completely different than our offensive line once we kind of get out of the core uh, lifts and drills that we do, and, and so on and so forth. To do things differently than the bees. I think a lot of people have been trending that way, but really Jay and Al, who have worked with each other for a number of years, have really put together a great plan. And then our integrated approach with our athletic training staff and the way that we work with our nutritionists, it's kind of all encompassing in all aspects of their lives. So I uh, really like where we're headed uh, down that road. Really looking forward to getting a, a, a new facility and really being able to make that a football specific. Uh, training facility that we can really maximize those guys. I'm talking about Jay Allen, our staff, uh, maximizing their skill set. Do you see the results of that? Absolutely. I think last year was a really good indication of uh, you know, a full year of working through Coach Hooten's um, and his staff's training and, and how we go about things. Um, and we're really, really conscious of, of, of our guys' necks and the way that we're strengthening them. Uh, you know, we've done a lot of research with that from uh, the standpoint of strong, strong enough, obviously, we have less concussions and things of that nature. There's some, fat, some stats out there that way and some facts. Really working hard for the soft tissue in the lower body, um, you know, with hamstrings, the hip flexors, and the quads, and calves, and then, all, then big time with our shoulder, shoulder complex that we've been doing, more preventative stuff. We're seeing more high school kids, especially the big guys, coming with torn labrums in their shoulders. Uh, just from playing with their hands now, everybody is, but getting the shoulder kind of out of the out of the frame of their body and getting jacked back is blowing the back of the shoulders out. So that that's been a there's been a big spike in that in about the last six years, just kind of across the board. Kind of. What are you seeing at defensive tackle right now? Maybe a little less experience out there. How are those guys you know, stepping up? Yeah, you know that helmets practices and team the D lineman is really cool I mean you know why I can't block them you know what I mean it's it's they have very small surface area that's why I see a lot of the guys in the NFL with really small shoulder pads so they've had a couple of fun days but reality hits hit tomorrow when the, when the big guys in the white jerseys can hit back a little bit more but I like our depth there and so the biggest we've been in there it's probably the, the most amount of bodies that we've had in there that we believe can play and be in our rotation so we'll see how that progresses and we got to do a great job yeah, communicating and keeping them healthy. Yeah, because they have to go right away maybe, or is that, is that wide open? Just mechanically, you know? Well, again, I mean, I would put a whole, I would not put a lot of stock in who's running with the ones or twos right now. I mean, you'll see different rotations across the board every day. I mean, the guy might feel a little tight during group or during individual stuff. He might just pull him for the day to be smart. Uh, you know, a guy might be just a little fatigued. All, all those different things in training camp. I mean, we've got, I think, 20, 21 more practices between now and game week, so we got to be smart. You do a deadline for yourself on when you want to make those decisions? Yeah, by uh, 7.30 uh, 
<laughs> Kickoff time in Cal. I mean, we, we'll work through it. I mean, even if, really, if we got to go into the game, a year a lot of guys. Partly by necessity because there's 9,000 degrees. I like playing a lot of guys in the opener. You know, they've worked, this whole football program has worked the tail off for the, since January 2nd to be in the position that we're at today. And I, I know the attitude and the way that we approach things, we'll continue to do that as we work through camp. And so, you know, I, I don't want to sit there and say, hey, you're the one, and here we go for the rest of the year. You want to be able to reward those guys if they're close. So I don't think I'll ever put a deadline on it. I just think if it, if it separates the, the competition and the reps will take care of itself. Do you recall throughout your coaching career having, you know, changing your mind maybe midweek or, you know, seeing something you like that one guy playing more, you know, deciding last minute or something like that? I mean, that's how C.J. Bechet took over the quarterback position a couple of years ago. I mean, he won the job on Friday. <laughs> I mean, I've, it was one of those deals. We gave the guys the test, and he won the job. So, yeah, I mean, I, we'll never say never. We'll evaluate things. I think we've got very strong competitive depth at almost every position. Um, but, but at the same time, we'll work through it.